This project aims to get volunteers, participants involved in carrying out original research about the Indian Army and to contribute to an exhibition that will go to, to Wickham, to Banbury and to various other museums across Oxfordshire and Buckinghamshire. The participants that have been involved in the project, they've, they've come from a diverse group of people, um, mostly local Oxfordshire people, but also students from um, as far away as Birmingham, Slough and East London. Um, and we've had people from the, the local Hindu, Sikh and Muslim backgrounds, as well as um, established uh, Soldiers of Oxfordshire volunteers. As a youngster, I did read the history of the Second World War by Winston Churchill, so I knew a lot about the Second World War, but I never knew anything about the First World War. My basic ba background is like, I'm a fashion designer. I'm into sales and marketing as well. My a thing mainly into this input is like about what globally what they were wearing and climatic condition was what they were wearing. The materials were sent to Manchester to make the uniforms. So all the while we were thinking and some research, some books we read is like it has been made in India the uniforms were, but it was made in Manchester back here. So that is a big fact I learned about that during the research. Yeah. My knowledge about the Indian Army was that they were involved, but I wasn't really aware on what scale. One of the things that has um, sort of I've been made aware of, or I have become aware of, is the suffering and what the Indian soldiers had to go through. Numerically, I'm astounded at the contribution that was made by soldiers from India. Um, the participants brought a whole range of knowledge to this project. Um, some knew a little, others knew quite a bit. But the, the key to a project like this is to bring everyone up to the same stage of learning so that they can all contribute to the interpretation. So the first stages of the exhibition were about immersing the participants by listening to talks, by watching films and by carrying out original research. In the Soldiers of Oxfordshire Museum, there's a, an untapped military archive there about the 1st Battalion of the Ox and Bucks Light Infantry in Mesopotamia. And many Oxfordshire and Buckinghamshire people are unaware of the fact that those soldiers from the counties fought alongside Indian troops. The Soldiers of Oxfordshire Museum archive is really incredible. Um, we've had a real privilege of, of working with that archive and it has material that people haven't seen for maybe a hundred odd years. One of the most amazing finds we had was these um, intelligence letters, we think, in Arabic, captured from Ottoman soldiers. I didn't fully appreciate like the scale and the extent of the fighting, so like that's what the research this project has helped me learn, um, just how much like Indian sacrifice there was. Um, how people of all ages and different groups participated in the war effort from like at home and from fighting and how long it took for like the recovery of India afterwards. It was kind of touched upon when I was at university because I did a few courses on India so they did speak about the war. I feel like coming here my knowledge has sort of expanded. I didn't understand before how much of an impact it had on the on the Indian people and also how many different identities there were. Um, I obviously knew there was different religions involved, but even within the religions, there's so many different factions from where they came from, um, their backgrounds, cultural. So I found out about uh, a Bengali uh, doctor who actually fought uh, in Mesopotamia and I got more details on his life, which I wouldn't have if I haven't been involved in the project here. Yeah. I am his 80-year-old grandmother. I am lying on my deathbed. If Kalyan was alive, he would have definitely been near me. The fruit of his love, my great-granddaughter, God has also taken her to his lap.
to write about his life after his death is a painful experience for me. But if I don't write about him, who would? How far the Indians went from their own country, people who have never travelled before, they had had to go to the other side of the world to fight. They've had to integrate with different cultures, different surroundings. So I think that's what really shocked me. I think I would like people to understand and respect the Indian contribution to the war. There have been different community groups of different ages that have all like, participated in it and I think it really highlights our different aims. So for young people like myself, we might not know a lot about it but we're interested in so we want to learn and there are older participants in the group who, who actually who know a lot more about what happened and they themselves are quite frustrated at the fact that histories don't incorporate it yet. So what we're trying to do is merge everything so that it's informative and interesting for all age groups. I like to see the people actually see that uh, the involvement of the Indian Army. There were about one and a half million Indian soldiers. So in that sense, therefore, the contribution to the, to the empire was huge. And what we have to recognize is, is that Britain wasn't able to win World War I or World War II on its own. It had Indian soldiers and other soldiers from the empire and, and later the Commonwealth to help them. And if anything, what's great about our project is we get to see how British soldiers from Oxfordshire and Buckinghamshire came together with these Indian soldiers to fight in, in, in the Middle East, for example. Um, and it's an aspect of our history that has both local and global connections that kind of have been forgotten, but are really important for us to bring out if we really want to understand the history of the war and of empire and, and even our local communities. And I didn't realize that we would get so engrossed in it. It's become quite an absorbing, absorbing event. So we're really pleased to be part of it. Mm -hmm.